Hi, this is Sonic from Aurora Shock Media, and I'm here to tell you about our latest videos over at Aurora Shock Media. Decon has been working on a Let's Play of Yoshi's Island 2. Welcome to Yoshi's Island, a paradise where all the Yoshis live. Rin is busy doing a Let's Play of Back to the Future, the video game. The voice of Marty McFly isn't Michael J. Fox. You're gonna guess that. As for me, I've been working on a Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. As everybody says, they think it's the greatest Sonic game of all time. And I have to agree with them. I really like this game. And while we're having a lot of fun making these videos, we'd like to get more of them out to you guys. So after the show, go to auroraschockmedia.weebly.com, click on a team member at the top of the page, and send them a message of a video you'd like them to make. We do everything from video game reviews and Let's Plays, AMVs, movie reviews, discussions on the most popular topics in the world of entertainment, and much more. Once again, go to auroraschockmedia.weebly.com after the show and send us a message. We look forward to hearing from our fans. Aurora Shock Media, it has begun. Yeah, you're listening to Flip the Wolfman Jackson on WGS Radio on Block Talk Radio. Ow! Um, I think Rick's got a story regarding one of the big games that I think most of us are looking for. Well, I'm, I would be if I had the right console, but, you know. It better not be Sesame right. Street. No! <laughs> God damn it, I'm a big fan of Grover. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, as we all know, uh, within uh, 10 days, uh, Smack, oh, Sm I, I'm sorry, I still call it SmackDown vs. Raw, people. I know it's WWE. WWE 12. Why they named it, I, I don't get... Well, you know what it is? They've changed everything else. I figured they might as well change the name, too. You know? Uh, they don't um, like... The, the only two letters they like in the alphabet are W and E. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. They lost uh, favor with all the other ones in SmackDown and Raw. Well, uh, I've been uh, doing a uh, quick review on the game and uh, checking some things out. Uh, for one thing, first and from, uh, foremost, uh, WWE is apparently not going to be doing an online demo. There's going to be not, not at all. If the only way you're going to be getting an online, uh, if you want to play this game, oh, bless you. Thank you. The only, the only way you're going to be able to get, be able to play this demo of any kind is, on, is in stores. I have heard some rumors that possibly this coming week there could be a demo, but don't quote me on that. But considering how it seems to be fashionable for the game to come out the week if, if the game comes out on the 22nd like WWE 12 is the demo will be out you know this coming Tuesday or Wednesday so 14th you know 15th 16th and whatever yeah I mean um, I would I would hope that they would put, at least bring a demo out afterwards but there will be some demo I think but you know even point. But whether it will be before or after its release, I'm not sure. But in the past, they have put out demos, and, you know, that, that really got a lot of fan base. But for some reason why they're not doing it, uh, even right now, there's not even that much in, in the stores. You know, it's, 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 so Perhaps it's because they um, don't want to people to be creating, um, you know, in that even in the demo, be able to create matches such as Zack Ryder versus Del Rio for the world title, and Zack Ryder wins. Yeah, but um, even if like that, Ooh, you, it. you know it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, but even with just the demo, you can just have like they usually just give you two characters, one type of match. So it's not like you can you know do so much with it. It's well, I, don't know whether, just, I don't know whether it'll be the same build as what I played at Game Fest, because obviously what I played there were quite a few glitches in it as well. But in that, I think there was about ten playable characters. 
Oh, I'm expect. I'm sure that's what it, because you know when you go there, they want to give you the full, you know, the full experience. When they just play a demo, it's a very minimal experience. It's they just want to give you a taste so you can go out and buy it. And um, of course, even well, for I don't the demo, think they want an experience in the game being putting a chair in the turnbuckle and then it just floats up in the air. Oh, of course. Uh, well, that was <laughs> telekinesis power. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was just the well, Undertaker was in the match, so. <laughs> yeah, CM, CM Punk won. Yes. There you go. Um, so uh, another thing uh, that was uh, pretty cool um, that I did actually check out that I did like was the uh, the premium themes. Uh, some of the premium themes looks pretty decent. Um, I don't know Those if anybody can... Car items and stuff. Yeah, and they're uh, money in the bank briefcase. Um, and he can dress up as gold dust. Um, or Ooh, John Cena. You know it. <clears throat> you can dress up as John Cena as well. There's a CM Punk Best in the World t shirt. I probably um, would look at that. That would sound like more like, you know. Um, you know. There's a Smoking Skulls title as well. <clears throat> oh, I think very, very cool. Um. But some of the stuff that I've really checked out overall, as far as the game, some of the things, it, it really so far hasn't appeased to me. Um, you know, the uh, the pinning, in the past, for the past 2010 and 2011, there was a lot of issues with the pinning. You know, the, you know, mm-hmm. the, the pinning, you could always kick up very, very easily. And I thought that was a big issue. Well, especially if you're good at button mashing. You know, if you're good on, I believe it was in 2010, if you were good at button mashing, yeah, you can easily kick out a pin no matter how much damage you, you've been taking from your opponent. You know, as long as you're a good button masher, you can mash those buttons and you can kick out with, without a problem. Mick 37 did that to me all the time. You know, he was always good at b- uh, button mashing. No matter how many times I would hit a finisher on him, he just mashes buttons r- rapidly and he kicks out. Yeah. What I've seen this time, though, it seems to be a bit better. Obviously, the more damage you're... Uh, your character takes less likely you are actually able to kick out. They haven't said that. They said more. It's easier to have that person because it's a predatory uh, technology, and uh, they it works on. Uh, they're doing that. Take, going back to that uh, old technology where you can work on the arms, the legs, the chest, and the head. In 2011, they took that away, um, which yeah. you know, which it, it, I thought that kind of stunk. Um, so now they're doing that with, with this new engine. I think they they basically everything that was in the previous games never happened. They really tried to rebuild it. From what I played of it, I, I, mm-hmm. or from what I saw other people play of it, there were some people probably doing crazy kickouts. Yeah, but then uh, they might have been doing it on purpose, so they stuck on the machine for half an hour, let, letting everybody else not play. Possibly. Um, another issue, this is a big, big issue that I'm going to solve. I'm, I think it's going to be a big problem, especially when you get into triple tags and, ta- you know, like, you know uh, uh, triple threats and tag teams, is apparently now, uh, it was going to follow along with the predatory technology, is whenever you're doing a move, someone can interrupt that move. And I think yeah. that's a big mistake, a very big mistake, because, you know, that, you know, matches can go on for four or five, you know, for four or five, you know, you know, for uh, for hours because the problem is nobody will actually be able to get a move because if I'm in the middle, let's say I'm doing a you know, um, like a rock bottom, they're gonna break it. If I'm in the middle of doing a body slam, someone can break it. Um, you know, it's gonna come down to pretty much just uh, you know, uh, you know, just a brawl, punches and kicks. That's all it's gonna come down to. Rick, question to you: uh, Do you believe with WWE not releasing a demo of WWE 12? Do you believe that will help or hurt the game? Why? Well, I think it's definitely going to uh, hurt because, for one, I wanted to see what the game had to offer before I even had a chance to buy it. And I really, For me, I'm on the fence about buying it. So, really? for me, it really hurt. Yeah, I'm on the fence. Ash, what are your thoughts? Um, obviously, I can't buy it, but if I could, I probably would be getting it. I probably wouldn't pre-order it and everything, but I'd get it probably launch day or whenever it comes out because 
considering, I, you know, I didn't mind SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. Um, I think it's been pretty good. Um, mainly because this is the first time I actually haven't bought, you know, okay, it was PS2, but I didn't even need um, cheat codes for change. I actually managed to get through the story on my own, which is actually pretty cool. Um, but Did you play online at all? Was 2011 uh, um, available online with PS2? My PS2 isn't connected up online, so... Um, let's see, there you go. Um, That's the problem. It, well, well, it, anyway, there wouldn't be many people playing it on the PS2, would there? Yeah, and, and, and I think... You know, you'd probably, I'd probably be waiting there for two hours. You'd have found a match. Yeah. And then you'd beat, uh, the first, you know, you'd beat the person probably in four seconds because their, com you know, internet connection is glitching out or something, but... Yeah. Um, apparently... But, but the, the, there was some stuff that came out this week with the Universe 2.0, which looks kind of incredible because, you know, if you're more of a, you know, a, if gameplay isn't a huge, like, bugbear, like it is with Rick, and you basically, your bugbear is the customization previously, then you're probably going to love what I'm talking about next because they have detailed what happens in the WWE universe now. Um, and there is a whole load of crap. Um, you've got loads of run-ins which happen straight away. Um, then there's also features where you can make run-ins, uh, but you only get 60 seconds. But then, um, when the, you know, you can, if the referee's been attacked, you can wake the referee up and get him to call for your guy and, you know, start a heel story or whatever. Wow. Um, then you've also got the changed... You've got the possibility to move the d days and the time... You know, move the days and change the names and change the set and everything of um, <clears throat> all the shows. So basically you can... And we'll have all the titles and superstars won't. So you could have, let's say, Monday Nitro, um, ECW on Fridays, and then possibly on Saturdays do a Ring of Honor show or something. <laughs> or even a TNA Impact on Thursday. <laughs> it's totally your customization. They actually showed the... Because what it is as well, every time a Raw or a pay-per-view starts, you get the authentic intros with the pyros. Now, here's a I question. That's the show. You, you even get the voiceover guy saying, and now, WWE presents TLC, tables, ladders, and chairs. But that looks very incredible. And what I will say is, the first, the first match you play in um, universe mode, um, prepare for, um, pre if, if we're always getting rocked this week, preparing your first match to get brocked. That's all I'm saying. Hadouken! Uh, <laughs> um, Ashley, um, a question. Is it confirmed whether or not the customization tools when it comes to designing your arena, is it only available from templates or <clears throat> is it possible to design paint tools? and use those paint tools on the customization of an arena. You can paint tool logos for your, you know, if you want a paint tool or TNA Impact logo of your own, you can, and put it in your own game. Um, you can paint tool, obviously, on your superstars or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can paint tool, I believe, as well, on the arenas. If you want to set Titantron or whatever, it will show it. It's Incredible the amount of detail that they're actually putting into it. Really, um, there's a, also with the WWE universe, you're going to get momentum from getting wins and losses. Yeah. So if you win, you'll go plus one in your momentum on your stats. If you lose, you'll go minus. Yeah. And then it'll yeah. basically sort out the weight from the chaff. But you know you can, <clears throat> and the draft as well. The draft feature is in, is very good. Uh, basically, it's the night after WrestleMania, 
every every year it comes round, and there'll be four or five matches on the card. And even if it's not your character, you can choose whether you want to be the guy for Raw, or the guy for SmackDown, or the girl for Raw, girl for SmackDown. Um, have them win the match, and then you get the draft screen pop up as if you know it's scrolling through like it does when they have the dress. And um, then the, 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 the superstar who gets chosen in the draft comes out. And then, then it cuts to the, obviously back to the main menu, and then you go to your next match on the draft and whatever. So, But sadly, you can't draft Michael Cole. Oh, uh, huh. Well, no, I remember that one time when Michael Cole got drafted to Raw and Jim Ross a SmackDown. How silly the purpose of, you know, switching them to on both shows, you know, putting Michael Cole on the main show and putting Jim Ross on well, a lot of people only feel. If only. Yeah, if only. Now, I've just eaten, like, AWA in there as well. Really? You can put AWA logos in there, or you can have an AWA show, or a um, WCW Thunder show. There's, there's quite a few of the art. I think even World Class Championship Wrestling, possibly. I'm not sure, because it's basically all the stuff that the archive that WWE has rights to. Mm -hmm. um, also, the tag team names. If you want to be yeah. called the Nexus, you can. Because there's about 50 different tag team names. You, you know when you used to come out and it would always be coming down to the ring? Wade Barrett and his partner, Ezekiel Jackson. Well, now it will be the team of Wade Barrett and Ezekiel Jackson, the Cora. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things I've always thought that they should have done, you know, in my past experiences with SmackDown versus Raw. I mean, you get, you know, announcer names for your created wrestler, but when you go to the create a stable feature on on the game and you create a stable or a tag team, there was never any names. Now, when I thought when, when they started putting like tag team entrances together, I thought that was a great move. But the only downside to it was the fact that they did not have tag team names. It was always just how you can call yourself the NWO. You can call yourself the Wolf Pack. You can call yourself the Four Horsemen. Now, Rick, after hearing that, that's going to be a, a much better feature. You know, one thing because I know that. And again, with my experiences, you know, I've always wanted to, you know, create my own tag team along with creating my own wrestler. I don't know if that was the same with you. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I've always created my own tag team. And, I mean, I was, um, for those of you who don't know, um, I've always, I'm still in very much in a wrestling, uh, what we call clans, and we are called the NWO. And it's very, very weird. I'm still in it. I mean, I'm, I'm not active in it, but, I mean, I still, you know, with a buddy of mine, and we're still, like, the only two members um, you know, there we go. Uh, you know, me and my buddy, uh, uh, Drop D, would always have the NWO, and we thought that when um, sold out, because it was an NWO ring, we're like, yeah, we always came out to the NWO pay-per-view, and we're like, oh, they got rid of NWO, and we could, like, we, like, we're like, what are we going to do now? No more NWO, and then when we saw this, I know he's like probably in his glories. He's probably, like, freaking out because they have all the W stuff. So I guarantee you he's probably getting it just for that reason. I can only imagine uh, with all the clans they have out there uh, online, like whether they play it on the PS3 or the Xbox, you know, with the fact that they can actually now customize not only tag teams and tag team names, but their own arenas, too. I mean, I can only imagine how many different style arenas we're going to see when this game actually does come out, I believe, November yep. 22nd. So we're going to see a lot of different stuff. You're going to see a lot of different arenas. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of crazy different shit, <laughs> my friends. And I mean, to be honest with you, it, it does kind of motivate me. That alone does kind of motivate me to go out and just see what the game has to offer. You know, the playability is really what thing. That, it's the one thing that kind of keeps me down. But, I mean, you know... It, it is what it is. But for 60 bucks, I might just say, ah, what the hell, go out, grab it, and, you know, if the game it's sucks, it sucks. for a couple of weeks, and when it will be 40 bucks, probably two weeks after. It, it won't be two weeks after. It'll probably be more like like five or six months after. 
Probably. It, will, no, no, no. it, it, will, it, it will. It won't. The price Those will. Those stores want it. your money, and if the sales aren't good enough, I mean, no. I, I can tell you that we're doing. You know, we're two weeks after the launch of. Um, oh, what was it? Uh, what, what came out at the end of October? Every back down. Not other than Battlefield Three. I can't remember. Hmm. Uh, something like that, but oh no, it was Deus Ex. Yeah. Three weeks after that came out, full price here in the UK, it already had a price reduction from about forty pound to twenty five. Okay, well I can tell you this for fact: every single SmackDown versus Raw, you can call it WWE, so SmackDown versus Raw game has not dropped in price with at least three to five months. It was sixty dollars, yeah. then it went to like fifty dollars. You know, and then I'm kind of like the forty dollars. I mean, you know, it, it, it takes about a half a year before it to really significantly drop, and and by then everybody's mastered the game. And if you're jumping on as a newbie by then, you gotta get your ass handed to you. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Um, question. Um, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but you know, match types, online match types for WWE 12. What match types have been confirmed for this game? Um, um, heck of a lot. I think there's singles, there's tags, obviously, um, speciality stuff. It hasn't been shown yet, but there is some rumors that, you know, the backstage bits? Mm -hmm. It's basically going to be one huge area. Really? Are they, go are they going back to, like, where you can go from one room and then to another room, or is it just no, a big room? No, that's the thing. You go from one room to the other room... But there's no loading screen. Oh. You don't get to a door and get a cutscene where the person has to open the door or whatever. Like it was back in SmackDown vs. Raw and Here Comes the Pain and all that. And even when you did, you know, you can actually walk around an actual place, possibly. Because there is one bit where it looks as if they're fighting, I think, somewhere in the parking lot. And it looks like from the way the dimensions and the design of it that you can actually walk through the corridor itself. And then I guess from there you actually go to the next bit. But rather than just coming to a blank wall and then moving on, you'll actually walk through and then I guess it'll fade out or fade in or whatever or, or cut to some load up, up to the next thing like that. So it'll probably look more original than, oh, I am going to open a door. So I can go to the next zone. Nobody else is coming in with me. I see. Right. Now, let me, <laughs> now let me ask you: You actually played the game, so this um, now THQ uh, talked about simplifying the buttons. They, they rearranged the uh, the buttons. How so? How did that work? Um, from what I remember, they they basically gone to putting it on the face buttons again. From what I remember. Oh. What? Okay. Instead of uh, well, there's some there's there's some stuff with the face buttons where it's slightly easier controls from what I remember because so they they, they, I, they, I was they mashing all the buttons because I was on a 360 and didn't know what the controls were. But so they don't use um, the analog sticks anymore. No, the analog sticks you still use, I think, for grapples. Hmm. And everything. If you want to do a grapple, I think you use the analog stick. But for the... I'm not entirely sure. Um, Maybe for the... I think we might be able, you might be able to start. But it, you know, if you want to just do a flat-out move without grappling, you can just do it with the analog stick, I think. Oh, for like, maybe um, like a quick grapple? <clears throat> yeah, possibly, yeah. But then if you want to get into an actual grapple, um, then you, I think you press a button and then it goes back like that, but then you go to the analog stick to <clears throat> do your move or whatever. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. I'm not I'm not entirely sure on that, though, because as I say, when I did play it, it was basically a case of press any button because I don't know what I'm doing because it's a 360. Oh, wait, I managed to reverse an RKO into a roller. I win. Oh. <laughs> One more thing. Oh, you never play on 360 again. That will be my only success on 360. Now, I assume they still have the one-button reversal where you just reverse the one button. Or yes. did they finally... Oh.
God, why are they keeping all the reversals on one button? That was that was one of the things I hated the most about SmackDown versus Raw 2011. I don't know about reversals on moves. one button. I don't know about I don't know about all the moves of via one button. Certainly, I I know the finishes are because that's what led to me winning the match. Because that was the most important thing. God damn it! I won the. I, I'm gonna keep boasting about that every fucking time. <laughs> I I think from what I remember, it possibly is the right trigger, which will be your reversal button. I'm not sure whether it's for all moves or whether it's just for finishes. It is. It, it, yeah. I think I it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. think it is. Yeah. They. They. But yeah, because what happened in 2000? I think it was nine. Was last year. They used to have the strike button for the uh, for the, for the right button for the left button and the grapple button for the right triggers. The, the triggers used to be, and then for some reason they had to change it. I don't know. Um, they broke something that was fixed, but, you know, that's just my, that was, that was another big complaint. Um, and, and the one thing that I am looking forward to is the uh, the submission technology, the new submission technology, which yeah, really right does good, yeah. um, did it really look like it was a real true submission, or uh, like, did, or was it look like it was just like uh, they changed it from breaking point to like the sort of the breaking point word to the the previous word? Because like I know like before it was just like a little ball in between. Did they really fix it, or what it's do you think? What's your opinion? Breaking, it's the text breaking point, and um, it gradually fills up. But you can, of course. Um, Oh, Rick drop for some reason. Oh, I'll get it back. Uh, now, what it is <clears throat> is um, it never happened actually. It never happened in the game that I played, but I. Oh, okay, I did lose you. Yeah, it, ne- it never happened with the game I played, Rick. But from what I've seen of it. It seems to be like a classic, um, you know, kind of submission thing, where it's a button mashing thing, where okay. the other person's got to try and fill the meter, and you've got to try and stop the person from filling that meter. But in some, I think, circumstances, it does involve kind of cutscenes of trying to get to the ropes if you're close enough. Yeah, I see. But All right. you know, in the middle of the ring, it'd be just a case of you over, you know, you overpowering the submission move and uh, either reversing it or just breaking out the hole. Probably. Okay. Again. So. Uh, it's uh, probably it's a positive thing because obviously, when there were submissions previously, certainly in 2010 and 2011. All it was is it just showed you holding the person, and there wasn't any clear kind of indication of the other person actually being able to escape. I see. All right. Just to bring in that feature back. Well, that's the advantage of moving to a completely new uh, game engine away from everything. Also, online probably could be will be better because no doubt. Billy and Rick, you had sometimes have problems with uh, the online play. Oh yes, especially like with the Royal Rumble feature they had in 2011. Yeah, servers and stuff. Exactly, but uh, the game spy servers that they've used for years and years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ever since you know the first online SmackDown vs Raw, which I think was SmackDown vs Raw itself on the PS2. Yeah, game spy are gone. They are going. I, I don't think I know who. Exactly, but there is completely new online. Well, they were with a completely new company for the online stuff. So we'll have to see how well that uh, how how well that fares. That's it. Now, when it comes to the customization features, like for your creative wrestler, uh, what are we looking at? Especially not only when it comes in terms of designing your creator wrestler, but what about the uh, creator moveset? Because I believe one of the big things that I really liked, especially when they brought it out, was the creative finisher. Because I know a lot of people out there, I for one, Rick, you probably uh, just the same way for years, always wanted to create our own wrestling finisher. 
Well, I, I think they had that pretty much uh, the whole year. They had that last year. They had that. they they were from that, and then they upgraded to in 2011 to, to create an aerial mode, which I think was great. And um, yeah, in WWE 12, uh, all the animations are completely redone for everyone. Really? Yeah. But that has led to some criticism. Um, one, Eddie Guerrero's frog splash looks like it's being done by a cabbage patch doll. Huh? Um, the, the animation on it just really isn't good. What most people are basically apparently saying they're doing after they saw the footage of it is um, taking Charbo's frog splash and putting it on Eddie. Because hmm. it, it just looks like not a very good frog splash. The other one as well is Vader. When you unlock him, if he's, you know, I'm not sure, he probably isn't unlockable from the start, but when you unlock him, the Vader bomb is not in the game. The Vader bomb is not available for Vader? Yes. So basically, what are they unlocking? The WCW Vader? Because in WCW, he didn't use the Vader bomb, he just used the flat out power bomb. The, I, think the, I think, I can't remember what his signature is, but his signature is the moon so. Off the, the top. The Vader salt. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, Swagger has the Swagger bomb. Probably. Which is Vader's, which is Vader's move. <laughs> so, a well, simple solution right there. I believe it wouldn't take gamers that long to create a different moveset for uh, Vader to take Swagger's bomb and put it yeah, on Vader. Probably considering you can, they've got the animation to do the Swagger bomb. You can probably just, hit, you know, branch it up and everything and do it for Vader probably. But you know, there's just some little bits like that that, you know, now that everything's changed and customizable, I think they're possibly nitpicking. Oh, they took away that whole thing. Um, boo. Hey, hey, if you want to listen to more from the show, then click on the link in the description below. Yeah! Hey, it's the Studley Man Ashley here. And I'm here to tell you that if you want to get the best news and views on video games at the moment, then you should listen in to Game Up every Saturday night right here on WGS Radio. We'll take a look at some of the big video gaming news of the week, cover all the stories, whether they be stupid, fun, or downright serious. We'll also take a look back at some of the classic franchises and some of the classic games via reviews and retrospective lookbacks. Make sure you're here every week, every Saturday, WGS Radio's Game Up. And if you're not, oh dear. Master, Chris Masters, and you are listening to WGS Radio on Blog Talk. Check it out. 